Today's fit tip goes out to all of you in the health, fitness, and wellness industry. Don't miss the forest for the trees. Make sure you communicate in effective ways. Don't turn people off. Don't alienate the average person. It's easy to get health and fitness people to level up. It's really hard to get the average person to take that first step. Remember that when you talk about your health and fitness and wellness advice. I have a feeling I know what this is uh, mm. in regards to. Don't yeah. major in the minors. That's yeah. another way I've heard Well, so, um, you know, it's interesting because, uh, I mean, for all intents and purposes, the health, wellness, fitness, and performance space, which I guess you could loosely categorize, right? Like the whole, that whole space into those four categories. They, uh, we, we failed completely, we completely failed at really helping the average person. People are sicker, yeah. people are fatter, people are just getting worse and worse. Both mental health is worse and worse. Physical health is worse. Like for all intents and purposes, if it's health, the average person is, is yeah. just- We're go, way behind the eight ball. We are. And, and, and I like to take responsibility for uh, this failure. I know it's easy for us to look and say, oh, it's not our fault. We're trying. But what we're doing is not working. And one of the things that we do that is detrimental- is infighting lots of, um, you know, you're not perfect enough or, oh, I know you said that exercise is great, but it's not functional enough. Or yeah, you gave that fitness, that dietary advice, but you know, that kind of food also isn't perfectly organic or raised in this particular way. And so a lot of this infighting happens and we end up losing um, the battle. And the average person hears this and what they hear is, you know, they go into it and say, you know, I think I'm going to start, you know, exercising once a week. And then they hear people talk about how it's a waste of time, mm -hmm. waste of time working out once a week. You should work out every single day. Otherwise, why waste your time? Or they say, you know, I think I'm going to like, I'm going to just cut my calories for now. Um, I'm going to kind of start that way. And then they hear a bunch of people yeah. be like, you know, calories don't matter. Everything's about eating the most perfect foods or whatever. And it's like, it's so people just get turned off. It's like, they, it's like, well, I'm wasting my time. Why am I even trying? And that only confirms the fact that I failed so many times. Maybe it is that I just can't do everything right. So I'm, I'm going to give up. There's a, hilarious, there's a hilarious short or real, maybe Dylan could look it up and put it in the, uh, the show notes because it's, I think it's so great. <laughs> And uh, I don't know who did it first. I've seen a couple people remake it since then, but it, it cracks me up every time I see it. And it's basically somebody making a video and it, it, it splices to like Paul Saladino giving advice, like Max Lugavere giving advice, Paul Check it, all these like big, uh, you know, uh, health and fitness influencers. And they're, it's like a clip like, each other. yeah, stay away from vegetables. Okay. And like, they, it's like a, a guy getting ready for like to eat something in the morning. And he goes to right before he goes to bite it, it clicks to like one of the influencers that are telling him like that's unhealthy takes for you. It, like throws it's, away. Yeah. yeah, it's like by the it's, it's like yeah, six the bowl of ice. Yeah, afterwards. yeah, I think that's actually how it ends. I think he ends like eating like ice cubes is like the last yeah. thing that he ends up eating. So like, this all this is all come. So here's where this all comes from, right? So Max Lugavi, a good friend of ours. First off, uh, I want to say this about Max. He's everybody I'm, we're about to talk about are good people in the space, hundred yeah. percent. And uh, they're all good people in the sense that they all genuinely want to help people. We know these people personally. And the, to our knowledge, to the best of our knowledge, they're all like real, authentically caring. They want to help people. Okay. And they all have different strengths. And one, one of the strengths that Max has is Max does a damn good job of getting the average person to kind of pay attention to certain things. He does a really good job of this. He's actually mm -hmm. one of the best communicators in this sense. So what he does, he does this post. He talks about how, you know, well, if you're in a pinch and you don't have a lot of money and you're going to eat McDonald's, did you know that you can order, uh, like what is it off the menu or whatever, where you could just order patties, just order meat patties, basically so, a pound of meat. Yeah. So that's what it is. He, he gets in the drive through like $8 or something like yeah, that. Yeah. He orders four quarter pounder patties plain. So apparently McDonald's of all places has a secret menu, making it really easy if you're on a budget, in a pinch, or if it's all you have access to, to order really high quality, super satiating protein. I am excited to give it a shot in the name of science. And he, and he eats it. And he's like, this is not the best meat. He goes, but it's a it's in a pinch, it's a better option, it's protein, this, that, and the other. And then now what happened was Paul Check, who for all intents and purposes, is the godfather of the wellness space. I mean, literally, I'll, I'll say, if it wasn't for Paul Check, wellness as we know it probably wouldn't exist. This guy's 
uh, he's a god in the space, okay? But what he did is he did one of those, like... strong statement. But it, he's, he's he just... A lot of the stuff you hear now in wellness that we take for granted, he's been saying for decades, my point. But anyway, Paul does a video where he's listening to this clip from Max, and then he's basically talking about how McDonald's patties are so terrible, you should not be promoting them, they're so bad for you, so toxic. So there's a few things I want to share with all of you. One, McDonald's is a massive conglomerate that uses commercial farming, and that is absolute torture to cows. If any of you just simply go to Google Images and look up commercial farming, you'll see animals that have been standing and living in their own urine and poop for their whole life. They're heavily treated with antibiotics, which will come through the meat. They're heavily treated with steroids, which will come through the meat. They're fed very toxic food. And then in the comments starts this like whole thing. Our friend Josh Trent gets in there, talks about how dare you essentially promote, uh, you know, McDonald's meat because it's so bad and this and that. And, you know, this whole time I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, you guys are, you guys are missing the big picture. Like what's happening right now is your, your fitness and health enthusiasts are intently listening. The yeah. average person who's, 99% unhealthy, like everything they do is just not great for them. It just got turned off. They heard Max say, you could just order meat and they, and they considered it for a second, right? They're like, yeah, maybe I'll do that because I do go to McDonald's every day mm -hmm. and you know, that might be a better step and I think I can do that. And then they heard all this other stuff like, oh, it's a waste of time. They also think it's toxic. I might as well go with what I've been doing. It's like, this is too confusing and that's that. Um, and that's too bad because the average person just, we just got to get them to take like one little step. We can't, that's it. We got to do that first. We can't make, what is it? Perfect. Be the, the enemy of, of better. Well, this is where, yeah, it gets tough because we start to get in a bubble and uh, we start really like proselytizing and, and speaking in a way where this is the ultimate perfect way to, to operate and to, to function. And, we, we tend to lose a lot of um, people along the way because like you said, it's, it becomes confusing. It becomes like, um, well, it's frustrating because there's all of these things that you have to tackle all of it once. And so like for your average person, um, they'll just see that as like this laundry list of, of items they have to tackle before they even can step inside the gym. Uh, and it's, it's frustrating because these are all very, very smart people that have got to a level where they've gotten because of all the research and all of the ways that, um, you know, that they've, they've found, uh, optimize the human body and, and, and brilliant in that regard. But in terms of being able to, to invite people, uh, and, and to, to allow them to take baby steps, like that's really like where we see that as, is kind of our mission is, is, uh, you know, from being personal trainers and trying to connect with our clients and being relatable, we can't lose that relatability. And I think that's something that is lost in the post like this. Totally. So I know all three guys really well and like totally know exactly where each person was coming from. So it's an interesting perspective, right? So first start with Paul. <laughs> I love Paul to death, but Paul, probably has to have his wives help him turn the Instagram on to know how to even use it <laughs> and is told Fact. like, and he knows that he has to, to be better about self promoting. And so he's got a team of people that are helping him like, Hey, these are what people are doing. Reaction, Reaction videos. videos. Yeah. Like he has no idea what he's doing. I swear to God, like that guy, he's so deep into reading and research and like that's social media is not his thing. So he's literally just, being told like, Hey, do these things and it'll go viral. I'm sure Max's clip was given to him to do some sort of reaction video to it. Mm -hmm. So he, I don't even know if he knows Max really well or not, but his intent I'm sure isn't malicious. And he'd probably, if he knows Max, totally. if he knew Max's uh, true intent, I'm sure that he would actually support most of what everything that Max says. So that's his perspective. Uh, then you have Max, who's a really good friend of ours who communicates very similar to how we do, right? Like, uh, Max is the guy who, who talks about, uh, phytochemicals on, on receipts and in your hair and so that. So he's done and the calories, not a calorie. And so he's definitely not somebody who would promote eating garbage. He promotes uh, grass fed beef all the time. But I also know that we've been asked in a position before or been in a position where someone's asked us, well, what do I do if I can't afford whole foods or, mm -hmm. you know, and they think that you, you can't eat healthy unless, unless you're eating all these really expensive organic foods. And so I know Max, the reason why he made that video was to explain to people like, Hey, even if you only had eight bucks, you could literally hit your entire protein intake in one drive through meal. That's basically the, the message that I think he's trying to present, but mm -hmm. it's not 
you know, it's in short form. So it goes like that. And then Josh, I know Josh really well. And I know that he's he he comes from our background, from the big Globo gym type atmosphere. He's a, a once bro guy who's definitely dove, you know, head first into the the wellness sphere and is really trying to promote that message that it's more than just macro calories and counting. And he doesn't know Max probably very well at all. And so he jumps to conclusions on what that whole message is about. So you know, welcome to social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really, this is, this is why it's such a fucking cesspool, dude. It's so awful. It's like, here's three people who I have a lot of respect for all three of them. I like them a lot. I know them really well. And they got themselves all caught up in a big circle jerk, not even realizing like they all probably agree. And they don't even realize that all of them probably had the right intent and then probably turned off more people than they turned on yeah. by that entire post. So, yeah, it's yeah. like one of the main strategies uh, if you're trying to beat uh, a message or let's say win a war, okay, is to create or foster infighting among the other side. And this is where messages get lost. Because um, if you took, I'll tell you something right now, here's, what's, here's what sucks about this whole health space, which is like, like I, I broke it down, but let's just say that's the big sphere. If I had a power lifter, a bodybuilder, a functional medicine practitioner, a a doctor with integrity, so like a Western medicine doctor, an acupuncturist, um, I don't know who else we would put on there, a fitness influencer, put them all in a room, uh, they would all start fighting and arguing with each other. The irony of it is all of them want to help the average person become healthier and all of them have some value, okay? They all have some value to present, but we end up, not moving forward because somebody goes on social media or tries to read up on something and it's a it's all this infighting it's this bodybuilder saying that that type of training is terrible because it's not going to cause as much hypertrophy and hypertrophy helps with insulin sensitivity and blah 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 and then this other person said well that's not functional you're not training functionally you're just trying to build big muscles and now you can't move right and you're not doing split stance exercises and you're not doing this and then another person jumps in and says you guys don't know what you're talking about all this focus on strength training and you're not strength you're not working on calming down the central nervous system with relaxing and resting and then someone else jumps in and says you guys are eating too many calories and another person mm -hmm. comes in and says it's not about the calories it's about food quality and someone else says but the animals are not raised right and there's too many antibiotics and everybody's like uh, yeah. you know what Turn it off. Forget it. Yeah. 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 I'm going to listen to the, to the news. The news tells me well, to mean, eat margarine. Meanwhile, it, 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 it reminds me of, yeah, like like one of my relatives come up to me and be like all excited because they switched from soda to diet soda. Yeah. Where, yeah. Are we, where do we put them in this conversation? Yeah, no. You know, what are you just going to alienate them and, and uh, you know, make them feel like shit that they're not even trying? Yeah. Well, that the truth is that most of our clients that were starting their health and fitness journey uh, you know, subconsciously are, are looking for an excuse to quit. Totally. I yeah. mean, like all you need is an excuse. Yeah. That's, that's like inside the go -to. and, and no, nothing gives them a better excuse <clears throat> than the health people disagreeing or arguing or fighting with each other or coming off pretentious. And so it's a, it's a quick turnoff. I mean, I've met a lot of people that are like, Oh, I don't, that space isn't for me. I don't yeah. want to be like this. Everyone's vain. Everyone's this. And it's just like, Oh man, it's so unfortunate that, uh, that we've done that. But I don't know. I mean, at the same time, too, I only get so riled up because I also realize, I mean, when we got together eight years ago, like that was, we saw that. Yeah. We knew that, you yeah. know, it's that was like. Very, very tribal. We, yeah. We knew that there was an opportunity to ha to be a voice uh, for all of these different camps, you know, to be able to talk about all these different diets, all these different training modalities and share with people uh, all the pros and cons of all of them and yeah. that, and to not. Uh, marry one single ideology and and communicate, which is exactly the conversation that we used to have with clients. Because how many times, totally. right? Your clients would come to you, and they would say, "Oh, I read them back then. It was before social media for us, so it was like, oh, I read this book on this mm -hmm. diet. I heard this and that. Well, Doctor you know, Oz told me this. Yeah, or Doctor So and So said this. And so, you know, most of my career was spent unpacking a, a lot of the the dogma." around health and nutrition in our space and, and, and extracting out to my clients, like, here's the stuff that is valuable and good to you. Take it with a grain of salt because it doesn't mean everyone or it's the end all be all. And it, but here's these other things that co totally contradict that, that also have some value too. Uh, today's program giveaway is maps aesthetic. Here's how you can win. 
Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now on Maps Anabolic Advanced, half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. By the way, some humility, okay? Just straight up. Like we totally messed up a lot when we first started as trainers. Sure. And this is, yep. this is the main way that we screwed up. This right here is the big way that we screwed up. It's that we were playing checkers when you need to play chess, when you're trying to help the average person accomplish lifelong health and fitness. So what's checkers? Well, somebody sits in front of me and says, I only have 30 minutes a week to work out. That's not enough. You got to make more time. If you make more time to exercise and you have more energy, then you'll have more time in the rest of the day. It'll make you a better mom or make you a better dad. You'll be a better person, blah, 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 blah. And I do this whole big speech. And then either A, I convince them to over apply themselves. And then if they fail or B, I turn them off completely, you lose. What's chess? Chess is how can I eventually get a checkmate? How can I get this person down the path? So then it became this. I only have 30 minutes to work out during the week. Awesome. Let's figure it out. Let's do a 30 minute workout. Mm -hmm. And then I know if I do a good job that that 30 minutes, that person eventually will say, I think I have another 30 minutes, or let me talk about, maybe I can do something with my diet. And this strategy, what's funny about this, by the way, what I'm saying is that the, th the three of us as trainers, we all figured this out on our own. It was the biggest shift. It's what turned me from a trainer who was just good at selling training to a trainer that eventually got people to really accomplish this and be able to do this long term. It was patience. It was, you know, communicating a particular way. It was focusing on the big picture, not all the small details. Not again, making perfect the enemy of better. Mm -hmm. But we all screwed up like that. You know how many people I yeah. totally turned off to to health and fitness because that was me. Yeah. They'd sit down and so, say something and I was shaming. Like, so people. how do you yeah. how yeah. do you two reconcile then when we come after something say like uh group training you know mm -hmm. like so how so hearing everything the spiel that we just went on about what we just yeah. called our yeah. friends out for doing and you know not wanting to turn them off how do you reconcile the moments it, today that we have where we say something like you know group training should die i think we had a good example of that with a life caller who called in and kind of uh, presented the fact that she this was literally the only way she would go to the gym, mm. right? And, and do would, something. Yeah, do something. And it's like, this was opportunity for her to um, get excited um, to move. And, and, and this was just like her comfort. And like, we, so I think for us, it's, it's nobody was really talking about the somewhat problematic uh, ending of like staying in that group class setting for too long. I just don't think that was being presented enough. And so I think it, it we kind of took it upon ourselves to, to provide a thought, a, a thought of like, well, okay, maybe this is your entry point, but it's not going to be beneficial for very long. Yeah. It, what about you? Yeah, no. So the context, thank God we have long form podcast yeah. because uh, these, this is all, first off, you have to be honest. So when you're communicating something, you're not going to say this is perfect. What do we always say about group fitness? Look, um, movement, some movements better than none. If that's what gets you to go, then that's fine. Here's what you're probably going to run into though. And here's probably, these are going to be the drawbacks. And this is why you're going to have to probably figure out how to move from that into a different kind of training. And then we list why, but it's not like, uh, we're not telling them like, no, like this is a horrible idea. Yeah, like, well, like, I also, so I'll tell you how, like I've thought about this, right. Cause I, of, of the three of us, I probably have come the hardest on that sounded really bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not you stopped and you didn't yeah, yeah. continue your set. It, was, it, was, it sounds not, even worse. It was going to sound worse as it came the rest of it because it was already oh, really? uh, yeah, unpacking. Okay. But I was like, oh, that's not going to go well. Okay, go for Stop it. that word. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm the one who uh, gets after the group training classes probably the hardest. And here's how I feel is that I feel really passionate about saying something when the the client or my the the person I'm trying to help is doing way more than they need to. Mm. Or making it more difficult for themselves, and that's what and and they, and they don't realize it or recognize it. It's like well, you're ha you're ha you're hammering yes. yourself in this class. Like 
Uh, yeah, okay, you could do that if that's all that gets you motivated. But let me tell you, there's a much easier pathway than that way. Granted, just like you said, the example you're giving, Justin, we did just have a caller recently, and I did start it off with, like, listen, I, what I would do with you is because you've admitted that that's the only way you'll come is to have this group class and community that I would start you there. And then I would sort slowly start to wean you off of that and transition you into training by yourself. And then we all went around and gave tips. But the, the way I reconcile it is that it's your, you're doing way more than you need to in order to see the same or better results. And that's why I think I feel so passionately about, it's like somebody, if you saw somebody who was just like stressing out about macro counting and weighing and doing all stuff, it's like, that stuff's not bad. Like, I mean, I did a lot of that for, but if I saw someone like stressing out over that and putting so much effort, I'd yeah. be like, it's, it doesn't have to be that hard. Yeah. Like literally just avoid these things or just count your protein and like watch, you'll, you'll have a much easier time, way less stressful, and you'll probably see better results that way. So I feel passionately about the advice out there that's given that is just overcomplicating or making it more difficult for these people and just adding more stress to them. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a great yeah, point. Yeah, totally. I think that's a totally great point. No, I, I think uh, that there is no, there hasn't been, I should say, a unifying voice uh, in the space. There just hasn't. It, it's it's. And uh, hopefully that's, that's what we're trying to do as much as possible. So we've tried to do as much as possible is help unify the message because we're losing, we're not winning. We're, we're continuously getting pushed back. We're losing ground. Things are getting worse. People are yeah. getting less healthy and uh, we need to figure this out because of, I can't think of a space that's more equipped to actually win this. There is no space that exists right. other than the health space that actually has the tools that can solve our health problems. So we just need to figure out, hey, everybody, let's gather, let's unify, let's gather together, let's unify our message, and let's get people to take those steps. Let's start with step one. I know the goal is to climb the mountain, mm -hmm. but this person hasn't even stepped outside their door. Let's start with one step, and let's get everybody on board with that one step. And then what typically happens is people start to feel a little bit better, and then they start to take, hey, they say, I want to take maybe another step. I mean, if we just got everybody, literally... <sighs> If we just got everybody to, I don't know, uh, eat the right amount of protein and work out twice a week, yeah. okay? That's so far from perfect, it's not even funny. But if you just got everybody to do that, do you know what per how much of a significant impact that would have on everybody's health? Yeah. That says more, by the way, about how poor everybody's health is. That's that's mm -hmm. obviously the point. Not that we're, you know, we're, we're going to be like perfect. that's magical or anything, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just we're so bad. Our yeah, health yeah. is so bad. It's like getting off the couch <laughs> would have been, would have tremendous benefits. This just reminds me. I mean, there's camps out there that are like shaming people for exercises and saying that like we should all, uh, uh, you know, strive to becoming Usain Bolt in sprint, like that's yeah. the ultimate <laughs> pinnacle of training. Like that's how ridiculous like the space is, yeah. and how ludicrous. Like like you're really trying to help somebody, and you're trying to turn everybody into Usain Bolt. You think yeah. that's reasonable? Yeah. Like so, let's all check ourselves. And and realize like there's such a bigger uh, need out there for people to just find their way into fitness yeah, have, and helping themselves get healthy. Have Mrs. Johnson she just start sprinting. You know, this is the most. You just need thing. to sprint. Yeah, yeah, just run as fast as you can. <laughs> ah, it's insane. Uh, I never we're all, do this we're all guilty of it. We're all uh, all of us. Of it, sure, of course. By, hey, by the way, it took me. But you got to admit it. It took me yeah. years. If you're not admitting it, I'm going to call you out. It yeah. took me years and years and years and and lots of fail. Well, that was like the 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 Attempt. video games. Oh my god, the video game comments that I got on oh, that thread. Wow. I have a story about that. The, I knew that would be the most. Yeah. Oh, you know it's so funny because you were sick, and I so like I had a day on Instagram. You know, what I'm saying? Oh, great. Was, yeah, I'm never on there commenting and stuff. And I'm like, oh, Sal's out today, so we were all in the studio just kind of hanging out. We're not recording, and so I'm like, and it, that had just dropped, and so I was just like fire and i was being a lot of it was sarcastic right i was just messing yeah. with people but um the, the part that i think is so funny about it is i'm like picking on these people and being sarcastic about some of these these video game dorks and i'm like bro like i'm not coming from a place of like standing on my pet like i was there like mm -hmm. i remember like being just like you and my buddy trying to give me a hard time and me being like look how much money i make and i'm still a grown man i'm gonna play till i'm 50 <laughs> fuck him you know what i'm saying like i said those things so yeah this isn't me like like at all pointing out that and and it, it wasn't it's so funny because the clip the way it was presented right because it was just yeah. a clip 
uh, you know, it's out of a whole ap- episode where we talk about a bunch of other things yeah. uh-huh. that are are making men weak, right? It's that are so lower targeted. Just- oh, okay. Dude. So the story, right? So I walk my dogs and my my good friend uh, and his dog. And we're like kind of talking and just walking, and and he's like a big like video game guy, and like and so his girl like sends him that clip oh it's like he sees your friend mind pump saying (laughs) i was like like, oh no like he just he was like oh man like i shouldn't be playing video guys i should be reading a book i guess you know (laughs) like i'm like oh man you know what i hate i hate this argument too it's like uh it's like someone like dude you, you know you smoke too much weed it's better than getting drunk all the time. Well, yeah, okay. I guess if those are your two options, you know. Yeah. Well, well it, video games are bad, but it's better than me, you know, doing something else that's terrible. There was, there was some, and I gotta give him credit because he did at the at the end of going back and forth with me. He did say like, oh, okay, fair enough. But he kept like going back, like arguing with it, and then he was just like, hey, bro, how about your Sunday football all day? And I'm like, yeah, definitely, bro, hindering my growth. 100% agree. Like, yeah. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm, yeah. saying, I'm not saying I don't binge watching Netflix. And I know it's not. That's the point of this. Like, we're all, we're putting this message out, not of uh, pointing the finger and, oh, look at us. It's like, hey, I struggle yeah. with like all those things. At one point, I've struggled with all of these things. And so, and, and consistently struggle with that, the pursuit of growth and allowing myself to be distracted by all these other things. That, I mean, that's where the place that we've always come from. So this fact that everybody got so defensive. Yeah, just account for it as like your your inventory. Like this is where I'm spending time and like like assess like how you're spending time and like what that's contributing towards the value of your life. And you that's know, it. You know what it is? It's that we've all been there, right? Where you're, you're doing something that's probably not moving your life in the right direction. And rather than be honest with yourself, be like, yeah, I know that this is like not really great. You don't want to make that assumption. You don't want to say that because that, then not, that puts responsibility on you. It's not even that, Sal. It's because I, again, I'm so, I know so I'm so close to this because I was me. You love it so much. You're so deeply addicted to it because it's given you, it's given you all those, those feel good feelings yeah. from playing it. So you're so, you love it so much and you've already justified it to your girlfriends and friends and stuff like that of like, it's better than going out drinking at the bar with people. It's better than this. Look at my life. I make six figures and have a house and I've got my shit together. Like, so you've already built like this identity fortress around it. and yeah. yeah, an identity around it that you know, anybody coming in at poking at that, like you already feel like you have the defense on that. Yeah. Just like, oh yeah, well, and so, yeah, you just, you've identified with it so strongly that it's hard to do. And it's like, hey, it's like, and I, and if you're happy where your life is and you're successful and you play X amount of hours a week of video games, and I'm not judging, I'm just saying. Like, hey, it's really the message is for the people that are stuck. The message is for somebody who's like, feels like they can't get ahead or the person who feels like their life sucks. And then you're also doing these yeah. things. That's really who the, the message is. That it's not, I'm not pointing the finger at some, somebody who's found some balance in their life where they love to play an hour or two video games a week. Like who, yeah. what? That's not the point of it. <laughs> and, and let's be honest. Most of you fools that are getting defensive. It's not an hour or two a week. It's you are freaking mucking for hours. Okay. Like I did get home from work at like nine, 10 o'clock, you and your buddies plug in and you don't plug it. You get know out till 2 so AM. Hey, you yeah. know why they got so mad, bro? Because because when we were talking about video games, what they heard was their girlfriends and wives and the shit that their yes. wives <laughs> say to them. Yes. And they were like, how dare you? Now my wife is going to make me listen to this shit. You know? Yes. I know that's what I was afraid of is like the pile on, you know, yeah. like, like like my friend got it from his girl. And I'm like, come on, like, we're not sitting here like shaming you for that. Like, he's like, dude, it's the only thing I look forward to. Like, you know, it's like, well, I get one hour. Yeah. I'm like, that's not the, you didn't listen to the podcast. That's yeah. a clip, you know? And yeah. it's like. That's so funny. So back, I thought it was pretty funny. Back to the whole like perfect versus good type of deal. Like, <clears throat> this is actually a great way to mention uh, Magic Spoon cereal. Magic Spoon cereal is a processed cereal that has been made to taste like the cereals that you grew up eating on Saturday morning, watching cartoons. The difference is it's very high in protein and low in other calories. And so it's a great option if you're going to take one step towards the better direction, or if you're going to indulge in some processed food, 
and I want to say that because it's when we started working with Magic Spoon, you had the purists come out. You're promoting cereal. This, this is processed. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. so is protein powder is processed Man, too, bro. I can't, I can't tell you, Katrina would attest to this. I can't tell you how many times Magic Spoon has come in in replace of me having a bowl of ice cream at 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So many times yeah. where I want to go downstairs and I'm craving like a bowl of ice cream and I get that kind of sweet flavor that is a quarter of the calories as a Ben and Jerry pint of ice cream would be and five times the amount of protein for it. It's like yeah. such a better choice. In the system. Now, never in my life would I say it beats a plate of chicken eight breast. ounces of chicken <laughs> breast and white rice and broccoli. Like, no, I do not think that whatsoever. And I don't use it well, that that's way. That's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like the Max Lugavere thing. Like yeah. Max is not the guy to be like, everybody should eat at McDonald's. This is the way to get healthy and fit. It's like, I know what he's, he's been bombarded by people talking about how expensive healthy food is. And he's like, this is a healthy choice in comparison. You know what I feel bad about uh -huh. with Max? He's uh, a poor kid can't. I say kid, he's a my age. I can't, yeah. poor guy, he can't win. Yeah. He gets, he's gotten uh, shit from the extreme macro side, like Lane Norton. Yeah. The, right. For saying that he talks too the much laboratory about laboratory science like, nutritionists. Yeah. Like talking too much about like, yeah. you know, the phytochemicals. Like, like, yeah. 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 Like, the xenoestrogens and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. And and now, now he's, he's got the wellness. About, <laughs> now he's he pulled out him too, dude. Oh man, he's trying to navigate. Hey, I think that's a sign you're doing. Good yeah, you're things. doing something right. Yeah, you're I, doing so right. You're getting hate on both sides, I Max. Agree, Shout dude. out to Max, man. Yeah, Much agree. love to Max yeah. for sure. <laughs> anyway, so I want to take. I want to just keep talking. How you feeling, by little, the way? Oh, we I'm, just, I'm, we I'm, just I'm, you sound out. better at I least. Know, I'm coming out. I, hey, that episode was like sales. Hey, sales were up on Sunday's episode. My my people were empathetic. I think people felt sorry. So my kids bought more programs. So people don't know, my kids were my. My wife and kids yeah. were in Arkansas. It was very somber. I went to, I was there. I only came, was there for a few days, came back because we worked, went back. My kids were sick. So my daughter, she had, but my son and daughter both had fevers kind of on and off. And then afterwards, congestion. My youngest, uh, my eight month old had croup at one point. So they were kind of, they were pretty sick. Went to go, we, I went back to Arkansas. We flew back and then I got what they had. Uh, hit me kind of hard, tested myself. It turned out to be COVID. So this was COVID round two, actually worse than the first time I had COVID. So I had a fever for a few days. I do want to say, uh, commend you guys on your bravery. You guys had me come in and record a podcast. Or stupidity. You know? no. <laughs> Justin, Justin and I are gangster as fuck. Yeah, We've been that way since day dude. one, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. I'll eat it, dude. Yeah. 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 Give me that thing. I've seen, I've seen you eat a, a, a burrito off the bathroom floor. So yeah. yeah. No, but yeah. you guys are- uh I'm good. Yeah, but no, you got it. Adam got it. Well, for I a mean- bit. I don't know what it, I didn't get. I didn't test positive, right? So I, uh, but I, you were in here. Katrina was in here, and all of us that are like Doug, right? And I got sick the same time that Katrina got sick, um, and but it didn't feel that bad, so I didn't think twice about it. And then I thought, well, I better test just to make sure because Sal tested tested positive. So I was like, oh, let me let me test. I test negative, and then I noticed that Katrina was getting sicker than like she never gets sick. So to see her sick at all was already rare. Is this her first time getting COVID? Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. that's why. Yeah, yeah. And so and it and she was getting she was worse than me. So it's weird that we had a cold that was I assumed was the same cold. And she's worse. It's never like that. So I thought that's kind of weird. I'm like, hey, you should probably test. She's like, I'm not testing. I'm fine. I'm like, you need to test. Just see. And sure as shit, she tested. She tested positive. Yeah. But so. now I'm a lot better. And I did, uh, you know, I did all the stuff I took. That was number two for you, right? The second time. It got, it got you worse. worse than the first time. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like horrible, horrible, uh, but it was up there. I had a fever for three days, which for me is a lot. I, I don't typically get that. Um, so I had a fever for three days and then just congested and shitty feeling, you know, no, tired. But I never lost sense of smell or taste or anything like that. Uh, everything else was fine. I'm on the mend. I did, you know, the whole protocol of herbs and, and shit, which by the way, do you guys know that doctors can now, not, not that the FDA is promoting this. So this is not an official treatment for Would they COVID. change their stance on mectin or they, well they didn't they got challenged in court mm. by a doctor mm -hmm. and that and the court said doctors can prescribe ivermectin for COVID. now this doesn't mean the fda advocates for it but 
now they can without getting in trouble. So now you can go to a doctor. It gives if you have a COVID. shit what the FDA says anyways. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. way, I care way more about my personal doctor than I'd care about the FDA. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. What the fuck but they, they can now say. prescribe it for, for COVID. Whereas of course. before of course. That they were told like pharmacies couldn't. Even okay. So help me, help me wrap my brain around what, what potentially could have happened to me. It's almost certain that the cold flu thing that I got was from you. I yeah. wasn't around anybody else that was sick. Yeah. We did um, kiss a lot. Yeah. 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 And we missed each other, Doug. I didn't, I didn't. And, yes. and I also, by the way, too, when Katrina got it was positive. Like we didn't, I mean, we had sex twice afterwards. We slept in the, like we didn't, there was no like trying not to get it. Was so it the I, same day that you guys had sex twice or was yes, it two days in yeah, a row? Same day. Wow, same that's pretty day. good. Yeah, yeah. Running about vacation sex, Champion. you know how that is, right? Yeah. That's so, like five minutes. Yeah. First, day. <laughs> we'll get to that actually. <laughs> the stat, I found out Justin's faster than 75% of men. Oh yeah. That's the yeah. crazy stat. Oh, Speed anyway, demon. Yeah. I'll tell you about that. Um, but oh, no, no, help me. Okay, facts. understand. Why so, you tested negative? So okay, uh, you, you know, it, it, wherever you get your your uh, it, you know um, news here. Supposedly, if you you know you you didn't get the shot like I did, you actually got I got COVID twice. The the antibodies are supposed to be in me for six months to a year. So there's different types. Uh, there's different layers to an immune memory. Okay. Um, there are, there's like the top layer and then there's lower layers and there's, uh, some, you probably have some type of immunity for a year or two years. The strongest type of immunity lasts, I think something like six months is what they're finding. Okay. Then, so then how does something like, why is it then once you get chicken pox, you never get them again? Depends on, so some viruses cause such a robust immune response that you maintain like really strong immunity forever. So chicken pox have, you know, is one of those things where if you get it once, if you get it good enough once, by the way, if you get it really mild as a kid, you can get it again. So later. that's kind of how I feel about what's happened to me with COVID is that I got it early and I got it bad the first yeah. time. The second time was like a little snivel and cold. I didn't even realize I had it until Katrina made me test. And then now here I am in a, in a covid incubator mm -hmm. with you and her <laughs> and and then i and then i stay with Baking like it. in a tiny room i mean we yeah. we drove in a car for five hours together back and forth all the yeah. way to yosemite we were in a little cabin together like there if there was a possibility that i could get it like i couldn't have put myself in you a did get it you just you just got it real mild and you didn't get a viral load that was big enough to show up on one of those over-the-counter tests okay mm -hmm. so that's the thing like if you did one of those like but really here but here's the thing that's weird i'm beyond a year so supposedly, yeah, because you remember what everybody remember what all the the you know the vaccine pro side was just like, well, natural immunity is only going to last you for six months anyways, yeah. and then you're going to. Yeah. So that was the big so. There's too much. So explain that, that to me. How a year has that. gone by, I haven't had it. I was in a situation like that where, and by the way, both you and Katrina were, were pretty bad. Yeah, and I, I'm around it. I got a little. I got a cold from it. Yeah, you know yeah. for sure. But nothing else. Yeah. Well, I mean, God, you want to explain immunity? Uh, no, it's so complex, I, and there's so yeah, many no, factors yeah. that play a role from individual factors like your stress, your sleep, your vitamin, your nutrient levels, this, that, and the other. Your own immune response. Did it recognize the virus fast enough? Did, how much of it were you exposed to? Did I just spray the shit out of you with with virus, or did you get enough just enough to cause a small reaction? Then to fight. I mean. I, who knows, dude? It's weird. I mean, I didn't make out with you, but I did with Katrina. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like I sh definitely if there was a possibility that uh, I would get exposed. I mean, there was no way that I didn't get exposed. Uh -huh. And again, I got sick. I was not around anybody else that was sick. That was yeah. the one. So well, weren't, you, uh, didn't you, weren't you holding some crystals or something? Yeah. Some, <laughs> yeah, some so, rocks yeah, that were yeah, warding yes. off the evil. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I don't know. I just, the point of me bringing it up is just that I know that when one of, the, one of the arguments that I was having with my friends early on when everybody was all scared about this, I, uh, you know, I told them, I said like, you know, I, I'd rather get the natural immunity. And then their, their, their defense is like, oh, that's only good for six months anyways. And then, and then it's going to mutate. You know, never in the history of the world has a, like, <laughs> it's so funny to me that people were making that argument. I know. Yeah. There's, that's never like a been healthy. Natural immunity is going to win all, every day of the week. Period. Yeah. Period. End of story. And, and then, yeah, it was all just like it, it's crazy how that shifted it because it was so motivated by ushering everybody to one solution. It was just vaccine, and that was it. And so yeah. it just dismissed all like like regular logic and reason. Yeah. Uh, from the conversation, I know, crazy. Yeah. Dope. Speaking of like treatments and stuff like that, so I did my first uh ketamine oh yeah therapy yeah how was that 
Okay, so was, besides giving you COVID, I, mean, I know. You get so, well, actually, I started getting <laughs> sick that day too, so it, it might have influenced uh, the whole experience because I started to kind of feel sick when I did the treatment. But anyway, boy, it, it was. C can you compare the two to me? What the two therapies you've done? You've done these two. Oh, like, EMDR. Unique, EMDR you, is different. Uh, well, yeah, obviously, this is I mean. a this is a drug, right? I so know. I'm under the influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was did uh, one did one feel more impactful than the other? Oh well, the your your the ketamine puts you there, and you can't get away. So mm. I can get away, you know, with EMDR if I want to or mm. anything else. Uh, but it so I so here's how it all went down, right? So we I, you go into this office space, um, and I'm working with somebody. Actually, she said I could mention her name. Her name is uh, Harmony Stone. She does this. Service that's her real name? That's her name, yeah. I know, oh, sounds like, you know, it's not. It's her real name. Sounds she, like somebody would do this therapy. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hello, I'm Harmony Stone. No, she's <laughs> extremely qualified woman, extremely educated, very yeah. qualified, very, very good at what she does. Can we, can we, Justin and I guess how she was dressed? No. Okay. What? Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Just go I'm ahead. Keep going. Weird. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Adam, sorry. Jesus Christ. Does she have a mood ring? <laughs> no. I just, I'm just wondering. Keep going. Sorry. No, oh, she's sorry. the Apologies, I'm, I'm Apologies Harmony. It was getting too was deep. just like low hanging fruit there. I know, yeah. my bad. She's yeah. very, very qualified at what she does. Really good. But anyway, uh, you're in this room and you, you, you know, you, you talk a little bit with therapists. Then you take, they, they give you like, there's like three doses. There's an initial dose, which is, big, a second dose, which is big, and then what's called a booster dose. And so the first two sessions or so, you're figuring out what the right dose is for your body because people are all kind of individual, some people more sensitive than others. You guys want to guess if I'm more sensitive or less sensitive? You're more sensitive, uh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. As, as I am on. with everything. You're the guy, yeah, you're yeah. the guy who takes a supplement it's like, it's working. Yeah. I, can feel, oh. I can feel myself building muscle. Yeah. <laughs> you literally just swallowed it. <laughs> yeah, dude. So anyway... <laughs> 100 percent so i do the first so it's a tablet and you put it in between your gum and your cheek you let it sit there for 10 minutes you swish around then you spit it out and um and then you lay back you put like an eye mask on you put on some you know noise canceling headphones it has like music and you just you just let your mind go where it wants right now you have your intention mm. but you let it go where it wants so when you say you have your intention did you yeah do you put that intention out Yep. Before. Yeah. Yeah. So like okay. your intention might be like, I want to, you know, uh, you know, I want to quit drinking alcohol or whatever. So then you lay back. Now the thing about, I've you, only done this once. This is my personal experience. So I am not representing uh, everybody. I've read lots of people's accounts and what people say. Uh, it was hard. It was really hard. Uh, like emotionally, you mean? It's super now, it makes sense for me because I don't let myself feel hard emotions. So I lay back and the I guess it starts to kick in. And, you know, and this is what my th the therapist told me. She says, you're going to go where you need to go. Like, unprocessed shit. Was she communicating shit. with you during this? Or was it Are just, just like sitting you there with her sound? No, she's in the room. Or? Yeah. And she's not. But then when it's time to try the second dose or whatever, then she'll tap on your shoulder. You come up. Okay. And then if you want to talk, you can, and she can help you like, kind of process what's going on. Okay. Right? So let me get this straight. So, okay. You communicate your intentions with her like, oh, I want to stop drinking alcohol or something, whatever, whatever. So yeah. you're not telling us. Right. And then you take the dose, you put these headphones on, you got the eye mask on you and then she leaves the room. No, it, the for, the for the first session or two, I think she stays in the room, but after just, but I mean, she's not communicating to you though. No. Like you're no. and she literally tells you, don't worry, it's going to come up. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I lay back hmm. and <clears throat> sure as fuck, that's exactly what happened. How, how long? Uh, it, here's the weird thing. It distorts time. Yeah. Any, an idea though? It's Well, it was probably 15 minutes. It felt like an hour or an hour and a half. So I lay back and the all the tough shit that I don't let myself think about, right, starts coming up. And I'm, so I'm like... Oh fuck! Right, and I'm I, I can find myself like trying to avoid thinking or feeling a particular way. It wasn't happening. It was going mm -hmm. there. So I finally let go, went into each of these thoughts and whatever, and it was hard, bro. It's like all this hard shit came up, and I'm like, so just, do you do you feel yourself like because you're blindfolded? Basically, you got this stuff, and you're like yeah. all of a sudden you just start crying out yep. of nowhere. Yep. Oh wow. oh yeah, a lot of it. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't cry, bro. So yeah. it was a lot. Were you like uncontrollably crying? Like, uh, <laughs> like that? Um, <laughs> snot bubbles? And- yeah. So, no. Uh, but it's still very sad. I think if you guys saw me, you'd feel very bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys would feel, want to pet your hair think, a little bit. I think you guys oh, would feel very okay. uncomfortable yeah. in the room. <laughs> you guys would be like, oh, well, we'll be back, Sal. Let yeah, us know when yeah, you're yeah, done. Yeah. But yeah, just a lot get of, some tissues. just heavy, dude, heavy, hard shit. And, uh, how long does it last? And I did the second dose and then boom. Wait, 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 hold on. Come on. You're jumping ahead here. So yeah. you're, you're in it. You're, you're crying. You're working through these things like that. That lasts about how long? And then what's the intermission look like? Or is there no intermission? I think that was like 15 minutes or so. Uh, and then I took another dose. And so she comes in and just like. She was there. She sits. She okay. Just, she's, she's watching sitting, you. Yeah. She's sitting in the room. She's just chilling. Right. Um, then I did the second dose again, laid back and just more hard shit. Now there were moments of like gratitude and appreciation, but what came up for me mostly was all the shit. I don't let myself feel mm. just the bottom line. I know Justin over there is like, that's really? why he's not doing it. Hell no. <laughs> there's so much there. Bro. Hey, hey, you're 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 like a, I'm afraid Justin would die. Yeah. <laughs> you're like a, you're like a masochist. Is what I was to say. Hey, no, you know no what? Thanks. What I'm learning, like big time, is that uh, if you don't process an emotion, it doesn't go away. Yeah, it just stores. Yeah, it's in you. Yeah, and what it does is it drives shit mm-hmm. that you don't know, and it without your permission, it yeah. drives your shit. So if you don't like complete the cycle it's like a cycle right (laughs) if you don't let it complete it's fucking stuck so what does that completion look like you got to go through the like hard painful like there were like i don't want to go into other like too many details but uh, two easy ones for me to talk about uh we're not easy but ones i've talked about before were you know i had somebody close to me die of cancer when this person and they were very close to me when they died i remember i couldn't cry like laid on their chest they were in their deathbed passed away and i remember like thinking why can't i just cry like why can't i let this out right mm-hmm. oh that came out that came out during Damn. the academy therapy then i thought of my grandfather boom that came out and then other shit that i don't want to talk about that just all came. And so it's like i had to let it out I had to come out okay so mm-hmm. after you process all that Real. yeah do, do you get this feeling of you come out of it and you're like i'm better now no or is it just or is there still work to be done i don't think it's that easy i think uh, that, yeah i think that no it was heavy it was it was it was definitely heavy and hard. So it's more like uh, an awareness thing first. Yeah. And then now do you now and do I don't you, know what the next ones are gonna be like. I know I've read a lot of people's accounts and they say that they'll there's times when they're they're very euphoric and they just feel like they're like, you know, just they feel the connectedness of things. And uh, you know, I don't know if that's gonna happen to me, but this was heavy, hard, but necessary. But necessary. And what 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 makes me go wanna go back is uh, I always bring it back to the space that I understand, which is fitness, which is like, you're going to work out. It's going to be fucking hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's it. And, and, and it's the only way, to, you, if you're going to progress in any significant way, it's got to be hard. So do I want to progress or not? Am I going to be a coward or am I going to have some some bravery here? And uh, the reality is I want to be a coward. I want to run away, <sighs> but uh, I'm, I'm going to choose to 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 go through it. So- I'm gonna step into the fire again. Now, how you know? do you when you when you come back to like uh, you know with your family and everybody so like yeah. that? Do uh, is it difficult? Yeah, because you're still like processing all this. And oh, it's bro, in the back I, so, of your, like, so you're not supposed to drive afterwards, right? So afterwards, I I leave and I go down to call the Uber, but I waited for like. 45 minutes and I literally I swear to God if you guys it's drove like by there. you start crying bro if you guys <laughs> oh drove by and you didn't know me you'd be like that poor man I was sitting <laughs> hey listen I'm a grown man you're like on a bench hey just, I'm a 44 year old grown man I'm sitting on the curb okay dude, on the street dude. on the curb just sitting there just for 45 minutes <laughs> Just trying to piece it yeah, all together. Dude. Just sit there fully uh, aware that the, the, how I probably appear to people driving yeah, by yeah. but I'm like I can't I can't even call my car right now I gotta sit here for a second <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. So then I got home and then I just laid on the couch and you're just still, you know, trying to process all that stuff. Yeah. Has it, so has it made this past week easy, difficult, uh, calm. benign? I mean, uh, calm? calm, calm. Oh, okay. So yeah. good. Even through so like, there is a, even through challenges and stuff, um, I'm finding myself more aware of my own behaviors and reactions and more calm about, uh, certain things. But I, I, I'm fully aware. This is like the first step. So we got, 
a lot of work to go. But it's, I tell you, man, people, I don't, this, here's the thing. I remember thinking this halfway through. Halfway through, I'm sitting there bawling like, this is, oh my God, this is so hard. I'm letting myself go into it and shit. I'm like, people use ketamine to party? What the fuck is wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make any doesn't sense. doesn't make any sense. I think it's like other psychedelics. Like you hear people talk about like tough experiences. Is it the environment or that just well, really drives the, a different change intent. to it? It's yeah. the intent. I think it just brings up. It's the up intent. Inside. I mean, it's just like, I mean, you've yeah. ever, uh, you know. I, ever, um, I would think most people have had an experience where uh, that's been amazing on alcohol and then a really depressing or a bad one. Yeah. If you go, if you drink your sorrows away, a lot of times that's a really awful drunk experience. If you go with your buddies to a concert you're excited about, it's like, it's yeah. a fun. So it's like the same thing. I think, can but even you. To, uh, just another level, I think it literally brings up what needs to be brought up. Mm. And so if that just so happens to be some shit that you don't want to deal with, because it's hard, that's yeah. what's going to come up. Because I've had that with psilocybin, right? I've had great experiences with you guys creating or doing something positive or business-related that it's it's all good. Yeah. And then I've had other ones where it's really deep with Katrina and I, and we're, like, working on some relationships. Yeah. So I think yeah. it has a lot to do yeah, with... you remember that time, how, Justin, we had we had an experience with... Uh, yeah, it was psilocybin. psilocybin. Yeah. They, <laughs> we were like, what It brought fuck? some shit up, yeah. yeah. It, it's because my family was close by, and it was like, oh, it just, it just hit me different. You yeah. Know? Like, normally, I was like, oh, cool, look at these colors and, yeah. and these interesting bugs and whatever. And then it was just like, I had this thought of my family and I just had this like overwhelming, like just, uh, I don't know, man. It was emotion. Emotion. It was yeah. just, a, it was just, that was an emotional wreck for like a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he found me in the house. I literally left you guys on purpose. Yeah. I left. I was like, I don't want anybody see me like this. Hey, <laughs> hey, I gave him a really long hug. Yeah. <laughs> that the, the uh, Robin it. Williams, uh, yeah. Matt Damon. Yeah, it's not, not your fault. fault. Not your fault. Yeah. It's not your fault. Yeah. It's totally was. <laughs> but that's the thing too. And I was like thinking about this because it's like um, you you think about like stoicism and you yeah. think about these practices and like it's almost like that on steroids, right? Yeah. Because you're really facing like worst case scenario or like things of the past that uh, have really like affected you in a certain way or traumatized you in some sense. Um, to where, like, I think, like, people just don't take the time to really acknowledge uh, these events and these yep. things, and um, it, to 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 really learn from them and move forward. Look, so. there's a balancing act. The balancing act is you got to get shit done. There are things you have to show up for, yeah. And so sometimes that means you got to just move forward, and you can't think about hard shit because otherwise you're not going to be able to go to work. You're not going to be able to the be thing. there for you people. Gotta sh get shit done or you, whatever. Uh, but there's a balancing act because you also need to allow, not run away from those things because otherwise they start to pull the levers in how you interact with people and the things that you do. And then you're not, you don't even aware, you're not even aware that you act a particular way or you do certain things because of this shit that you're not, like you're not particularly facing. It's all about bravery, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's all about bravery. So uh, that was another thing I realized. It's like, oh, me not allowing myself to feel this isn't, isn't making me better. It's actually making me worse. And it's because I'm scared. I got to face this, you know, kind of shit. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So you think there's Crazy. a, like a possibility that someone has like this all positive experience? Oh yeah. Oh, you read, read about them. Okay. Where it's yeah. like, oh yeah. And, and so I, I'm, there's gonna like be, I, I could, I could, I mean, I would think that I'm gonna you could also have like a, what? I'm going to do eight sessions. Oh, they said anal. Sorry. Eight. Whoa. <laughs> I, mean, I, said, I was like, what, what did you say? <laughs> like that's going to give you a different okay, outcome. I'm completely out of this therapy now. <laughs> <laughs> wow just like that wow. you lost justin and i oh, wow. I'm just done. like that <laughs> justin's like that i was knew like, it was going there yeah, I knew yeah, it. that's I knew why it. i'm not doing it yeah. that's my fear i'm trying <laughs> to tell you guys dude <laughs> that's you'll have that door <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> start crying next thing you know <laughs> anal no, no, I'm doing two eight plus of them. Four, oh, guys. Jesus, hey, sorry, Holy you're cow. still a little, you're still a little cloudy. No, <laughs> no, dude. Oh, oh, dude, I totally left turn. But did you guys, uh, did you guys see the news on Barstool Sports with Dave Pointnoy? Well, like, hey, well, so explain he, that he he bought uh, so he, he sold the company for yeah. a half a billion dollars. Okay. Okay. So, and probably made a gajillion, right? So right. Yeah, I'm sure he made a lot of money on that sell to Penn National. I told you guys about Penn a long time yeah. ago. That's the, gambling, the online gambling. Yeah. yeah uh, online company. gambling and stuff. So <clears throat> I had bought shares in them a long time ago. And uh, so they basically were partners now in business. 
Uh, I don't remember what the exact percentage of the company that Penn owned after they after they bought, but they sold back to him for one dollar. Yeah, why? Because of so obviously this was a plan. It was like let me se sell to you. Well, oh, the, the giving it back to for yeah. for a dollar was a plan, and then if th there's a little more to it, right? Too. So if he then goes and sells again, that he they're entitled to a bunch. Okay. So basically, it's basically giving him full control and ownership. And was they, it? Would now did he? Did they? Did he stay away, or he sold? Therefore, he's <laughs> like his hands are free of particular. Was decisions. it? Was it on the decline or something? Was he worried about? No. The what was happening was that with a with a gambling app or company, oh. the laws and regulations and the rules were so were getting so stringent that they couldn't and what they were about to do. So Penn National mm. was about to sign with Disney, mm. ESPN. Mm. And Disney wanted nothing to do with Dave. So mm. the deal was if if oh. we are going to if Penn National was going to partner up with ESPN and Disney, you can't be with Dave. And so basically they sold they sold so it. So Dave's back. out. So no Dave was out. Well, no, they sold the company, and so then Penn can go back. and So ben, Penn is no longer associated with Barstool. So basically, they sold Barstool back to Dave. Dave is oh, in. Oh, I see. Yeah, and now they can go They can go full on over to smart ESPN. Business. Yeah, real smart. That's really smart business. Yeah, I mean, God, what a win for, for Dave Yeah, to be able to sell, get back control for a dollar, and now he's running his company the same way he wanted to run his company. After he before. sold it for half a billion. Yeah, after he cashed wow. out big on it. And the only thing Crazy. is in the in the in the contract is that if he turns around like sells the company, say for two billion dollars in so many years, Penn's entitled to I don't know sure. what the, the the breakdown is that they would get paid out. He's a smart business guy. He is. Yeah, that was pretty I, I thought that was pretty savvy and a, a win all the way around uh for him. Because he felt like his his content was being steered by you know, the Penn National because of the, all the regulations and stuff um, they couldn't say or talk about. And so. Interesting. So, yeah. so what is this, this statistic that you're trying to. Uh, oh, that you're faster than. Relate to me. Yeah. That you're faster. Well, actually Sal pointed it out. I brought the statistic and he's like, oh my <laughs> no, God. Hey, just don't throw me oh, in here. Sal. Yeah. <laughs> what did so, you say, Sal? Yeah. <laughs> so 75% of men uh, actually orgasm within two minutes of intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. You're fast as that's, that's, right. that's a lot. We need seventy five percent of I men. I beat you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orgasm yeah. within within two minutes of intercourse. Yeah. Wow. So that's that. Is that true? I mean, like in the very all, beginning. How do they right? know this? That can't be like. I'm, I'm sure it's reported. Are, are they? Are, yeah. Are they like anonymously? Uh, right? Who's reporting this? Well, song? you're anonymously. You're not being like, hey, I'm the guy who can only last yeah. a minute thirty. First place. And two, yeah. it's not so. It's somebody to get a new relationship. I mean, at least give the guy a bit of credit, yeah, right? Like, so you, like you'd think at that point it's going to be you know longer down. I mean, road. that's a lot. Three quarters of men. I, it's, I I wonder how they got the statistic though. Like how real? Are you is fact that? checking me right now? I'm looking for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Can, yeah can just forward. Google how fast. What you got, Andrew? It's, can, it's true. Um, it was reported 75 percent of men ejaculate within two minutes, but it's all that is based off a study from the 1950s. Oh well, oh, from the fifties. Oh, you think we're better I mean, now back for? then? No, I mean, but the, but like you barely saw ankle back then. I, you're like, ah, yeah. I want to know. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, come point, on, that's Justin. that's different. That's yeah, guys point. were on edge yeah. constantly. Yeah, yeah, I want to know war, and then oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I want to know how they would study that. Did they have a bunch of guys in a room and they're no, like, no? I bet you. Okay, remember I've told you guys ready before? go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have. I'm a part of this like survey that's been going on since I was like uh, six or seven years old. That they I find me, about this. They, they they find me every like three to four years. They pay me like a hundred and something bucks. It's gone up over years. I don't know what it is now. They haven't found me in oh, a Courtney while. Courtney was part of one of those. But they uh, they've, they've literally studies, yeah, yeah followed me at, at every house that I've ever lived in. Like they've gone and 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 found me. And it's I, I put these headphones on. I have a, a, a laptop, and they're like very personal questions. And it's an anonymous survey and it's just, and they basically have followed my life, everything from my, and you know, obviously I remember doing it as a kid and then as adult. So a lot of these questions, like when I was like 12 asking me about drugs or trying to like, no on any of those yeah. things and some things have changed. And so that's where a lot of these statistics come from when they, at the, and then they ask questions about my, my sex life too. So those were in there. So that type of stuff. So I'm sure it's like a, a, a survey like that where they, they anonymously, you know, answered a wow. bunch of these random questions, but I've always thought that was really interesting how I got like thrown into that uh, well, thing. Well, you know, there was a whole art. There was an argument for a long time as to what the purpose of the female orgasm was, because 
evolutionarily speaking, it makes sense, obviously, for a man to ejaculate orgasm and also for it to happen quickly because yeah. it gives increases your odds of, you know, you're gonna you're gonna pass on your DNA, right? But then the argument was like, well, why do women orgasm? Is it just a leftover byproduct? What's the value? Now they've shown in studies that when a woman orgasms orgasms, her odds of becoming pregnant go up, but it's not enough to really make sense. So the big argument really is that it shows how social we are and that it really wasn't the story of just guys going around banging chicks as fast as they can, but rather uh, actually wanting to please them as well. And that the women, could, you know, pick, uh, you know, mates and say, well, he, you know, he actually cares about how I feel type of deal. Hmm. So yeah, I know. Interesting. But yeah, but yeah, Justin, definitely fastest. In I mean, the West. Yeah. G gunslinger <laughs> over here. <Yeah. laughs> he read that stat to me. I'm like, please read it like this, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Oh, we we have no home. idea about yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you. Oh, I was going to comment on this study. It was a Kinsey study. So it was back in like 1948. Uh, but the stats have changed since then. It's between 5.4 and 7.5 minutes now. Oh. Median time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Way to go, guys. Uh, suggesting that men have adapted their sexual behavior to better fit the social ideal. Oh, I interesting. Mean, just uh, what it says. Doubled our time. That sucks when you're so low on time that double your time is five minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I crushed it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Anyway, did you, uh, did you guys see the follow-up on the plain lady? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so she, is it she real? put out a video. Yeah. Is it real? Well, okay. She yeah, apologized, basically. She just apologized. It, was a, it was a weird, a weird apology. And why, yeah. why was she even, I mean, yeah, I get that she was like cursing. And so she probably felt bad. There was kids and like, you know, embarrassed about it. And like, I mean, it does, I, that's gotta be weird to become an instant, like viral meme. Yeah. Cause you have a freak out. Like she literally freaked out. And so she probably was just like very embarrassed by that fact, but doesn't reveal like any of what caused that. Like she doesn't like yeah. bring up who was not real. Yeah. You know, like, what do you like? What spurred that? Like she doesn't, there's no context of like, 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 well, did she take any kind of medication or was like, uh, was the guy just like acting weird or like, this, what's the rationale other than like, we're still left with the fact that you saw something and it freaked you the fuck out and you had to get off the plate. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we, what she happened? gave us nothing. Someone sideways blinked. That's what I think. <laughs> she just didn't want to say it. Yeah. Cause they, they, they threatened her. Yeah. I, I thought it was really weird to, to be silent that long. And then she like, you could tell she like got all done up in her makeup to do like this formal, like, yeah. you know, apology or whatever good. like that. And thought that's really weird, dude. Like, I don't know. I'm excited. My painting should be here any day now. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that's, that's the best, best painting. I was so pumped That's the best that. thing I ever. Know. I'm super pumped I know. about that. Hey, I want to, I want to comment on. Someone needs to interview her. I want to comment real quick on, uh, uh, Folletin, which is the, the peptide hair, product that we we did an episode on hair regrowth uh with jay campbell and uh there were people saying oh my god it's so expensive this and that it's a three-month supply i want everybody to know that it's used very little yeah so you know, it's a three-month supply a drop yeah, yeah so that's why it costs as much as it does uh but hey you know vicky's still telling me she says she could tell little by little that it seems to have some positive effect on me yeah, and i've yeah. been using it now for two months well you're the you're the best because you're the most consistent with yeah. it so I'm, yeah. I, I was like consistent for a minute, then I fell off, and then I was like, it's so hard for me because I don't care. Yeah. I, 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 I want to care, right? I want to care. You've been doing the Sal Palmetto I, I before to. that too, right? And I was so. using Sal Palmetto shampoo before, but that, all that does is reduce DHT in the scalp. But are, now, are, are you sure you don't care, or is it that you're just, you don't want to be let down and sad about it? <laughs> You know that, what would, I mean? that would imply I care. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, I don't know if you guys remember or not. But I don't I, know. There Once was, you shave, it's, you There know, was like two years there where like Katrina and I would kind of get into it. Like I wanted to shave it. As soon as it started to thin, I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm over this. Let's shave yeah. it. And she's like, no. She was so adamant about me not shave. She, she was so afraid I was going to be like this ugly bald guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, listen, I got a pretty good round head. I said, like, I used to shave it when I was a kid in sports. I loved it, you know? And. Made it think made things easy, and so every man loves the feeling of being oh, of that. And not to me, I never liked my hair. And a woman just like doing this, oh, it's the best. Oh, with the yeah. even yeah. even when I had all my hair, I didn't like it. I was never like I I see my like my son's hair. I wish I had my son's hair. My son has cool hair. Like he could do stuff with it. What so was I, that with your hair? 
it was like wavy and nappy. Oh, you yeah. had big old hair. Yeah, it's like, like kind of like your son's hair like that. Yeah, like yeah, how his yeah, hair is yeah. like that. You, yeah. And ask him. Like, you can't fucking do anything no, with that hair. No. It's awful. You no. can't style it. You can't yeah. do anything. It's just poofy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I never liked it. <laughs> so I think, you know what I'm saying? I think, you know, be careful what you wish for. I think I was just like, ah, the fuck this hair. And so then God's like, okay, here you go. You know, no, so no more hair. <laughs> right. I heard you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I heard you. How about this, buddy? I like how about no hair? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but... so I just, I, I'm not... Um, I don't care enough. I'm not. I guess I, I wish it was a bigger insecurity, yeah. so maybe I would be more motivated. My to brother's be consistent. my brother's swearing by it. Now he's he's been fighting his. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's been fighting. Isn't his isn't it like a? It's actually like a really. I shouldn't laugh about that, right? There's a lot of men that like suffer from uh, depression and stuff because of baldness, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's like yeah. a mate. Isn't it like one of the Especially top the ones that their identity was through their hair? Yeah. Like they do it like, and like that's maybe what that's like. Amount. If I had like Patrick yeah. Swayze hair or something, yeah. and then I lost it, then I would be like, oh, you know, yeah. or like how Craig Caperso. Yeah, know, if I had like this, like these. What, long, what's that guy's name? Jesse from Full House, who's always yeah. Like, if yeah, if I had like beautiful had locks and, and then I went hair. bald, maybe that would do that. Yeah. But I hated my hair since the jump. Oh so. uh, yeah. What's the what's the depression stats? Well, I don't know what the stats are, but my thought is, yeah, a lot of guys are very uh, concerned about it and myself personally i think i have a really strange shaped head so i don't think i look good bald so mm. yeah so you're concerned too mm. yeah you're concerned course. for the same reason sal is yeah what? Exactly. no i got a good shaped head what are you talking about really who told you that i what i don't <laughs> <laughs> who told you that? you and i have a very who's, similar shape hey, kind of information lying, you lying to hey you? hold on a second no, my head do. and your head are very similar not the face you got way more m way more cheeks <laughs> but the, yeah. the head yeah. you and i have a very similar shaped head it's true Justin, not nah. Justin's got. Do we? He's got. Oh big no, head. he's got a fucking jugger. I got a head yes. ready for a helmet. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, doesn't. He's, he's, he's a big. He doesn't need a helmet. He's a big helmet. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think it's space balls. Oh, head, but yeah. Honestly, fucking just. Space balls. I'm surrounded by assholes. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> hey, hey, can we can we talk real quick about <clears throat> you brought something up that mm. I vaguely remember knowing about, but then I I read into it and I was like. I can't believe this was allowed to happen. The thing with Brooke Shields. Oh, bro. I what the? Have we not talked so, about this? I feel like we might have alluded to it. But yeah. I, I, if we did, I was like not paying attention when you guys brought this up because I knew nothing about this. I knew about it, kind of, but I, for some reason I didn't really think about it. And then when you brought it up- yeah. I, like you realize the, the I like, went down the, the rabbit. Gravity it's of the so whole thing. creepy. It's like it was hard to like believe. You yeah, know? it's like I can't believe she was how old? 10? 10. 10. 10 years old. Ten, Ten in Playboy posed in Playboy. Eleven naked. Eleven plays a prostitute in a movie and, and where it, she had to make out with where she had to make out with like yeah. a twenty eight or thirty something year old man. And there's like full nudity. I think of her. In yes, that as well, yeah. it's like absolutely repulsive. Like I yeah. cannot believe that that made it through. And this was in the seventies, right? Yeah. This was in the 70s. I, You know what's crazy? That would never fly today. Well. Like back then. What's crazy to a, me, it, what's crazy to me is. I mean, Netflix there, might pick it up, but you know. There's <laughs> a, yeah, no, I mean, wh why it's actually really crazy to me is I thought what's been happening in the last, you know, five years with like, you know, the, what was this? The, the cuties. The, the, yeah, yeah, cuties. Yeah, cuties. And, the, kind of what I'm referring and to. all this stuff that with pedophilia going on. We have the documentary that just came out. I'm just like, man, we're like. And all the all the Hollywood getting the Epstein like all this stuff coming out. I'm like, God, this is like so bad, but it's been happening for such a long time. And to, we were like normalizing it back then, you know, because mm -hmm. it came. I know that they put it under the umbrella of art. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was right around the you know the big sexual revolution, right? It was like the '60s, you know, make love, peace, all that stuff like that is going on. And so they they put it in the kind of like art, free spirit, anyone should be allowed Disgusting. to do like. Beyond discussing a ten-year-old uh, fully nude in Playboy, and then at eleven years old to do that. One, I you're know. a fucked up mom to even allow your kid to do that. Uh, or evil, yeah, yeah. evil, Un unbelievable. Can't imagine what she's had to deal with. Like looking back at that, like and like how traumatic that must have fucked been the up. rest of her life. Fucked up. Yeah, yeah. you cannot. You, you don't make it out of that and not get fucked up. That's no. just that's impossible. You guys don't even know, dude. So if you go down this rabbit hole, I, I've, I've done it a couple times, but I can only do it for about ten minutes because then it just bothers me so much. Did you guys know? I want to say in Germany, there was a psychiatrist who made the case, effectively made the case. That oh, orphan, orphan kids, children, yes. in order to help them, that they're going to be, they'll be okay. They'll be better off if they're with in a relationship with an adult where the adult cares for them and still has consensual, right? Quote unquote, consensual 
sexual contact, so it's molestation, but you know, not hurting the kid. This is how they argument. It's better for them. They're being cared for. They actually care for the kid because they have this relationship with them. This was the case that was made to the point where Germany, it was public policy. They took orphan children, put them with known sex offenders for a decade or so. And these kids were being knowingly put with Jesus. sex offenders. It's absolutely appalling. And that was the argument that it was going to, it was better for them than being on their own or, you know, being orphans or whatever. Crazy, yeah. crazy. And this was in the sixties. I want to say. Yeah. Insane. I don't know. I'm don't with, know. I'm with Putin on how to handle this. <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> do you know what they do over there? Chemical castration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, if you get caught as a pedophile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get rid of your shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, that's, I think, a little too easy, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, let's give a shout out to, I can't believe I never gave Paul Check a shout out. Yeah, Paul Check. That's crazy. We talked about him earlier. I, again, I've called him the godfather of wellness. He's, he's a legend in the space. He is a total legend. He's one of the smartest people uh, when it just comes to total overall health and wellness. Uh, very interesting guy. Also very entertaining. We've had him on the show a few yeah, times. Yeah, if you're a new listener and you want a wild couple episodes go back and yeah yeah i'd, I'd say we went his, on a journey with him but yeah. he's he's a good he's wise. a good time he's a great guy love the guy um so wealth of knowledge check him out all right you've probably read about the potential benefits of cbd the problem is most products on the market are simply ineffective that's because either a they have no cbd at all or b they have some cbd but they don't have other cannabinoids cannabinoids work when they're in combination, it's called the entourage effect. There's a company called Ned that makes a full spectrum hemp oil, high in CBD, but also has all the other cannabinoids and the terpenes and other things that are in the hemp plant that make the CBD work so well for things like inflammation, sleep, euphoria, gut health, and more. Go check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mind pump and get 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Mike from Nevada. Mike, what's happening? How can we help you? What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? Good, good. Good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So uh, I'll get to my question. Um, and I apologize, Adam, if I misquote you. But I remember a couple episodes ago, you were talking about to a caller about losing body fat and that you would what you would do would be take more steps. So... If it was 10,000, you do 12,000, 14,000, so forth and so forth. Yep. But what if you couldn't do that? Um, what if I couldn't walk? Is what you're saying? Yeah. So, so, so basically my issue is, uh, so I have scoliosis, which hasn't really bothered me. Uh, but I have, um, I have a shift in my L4, L5 lumbar spine, which causes numbness in my quad. Um, I also have uh, carpal tunnel in both hands. Uh, I'm just like, great, uh, which doesn't bother me when I work out. It's kind of weird. It never happens when I work out. But let's say, uh, example, if you were going to Costco and you were parked like, I don't know, over half the length of the, of the parking lot. If I walk there, I'll start feeling the numbness. And the longer I walk, it starts, I start having hip pain. So I have to sit, I just have to like kneel down for a minute. And, but I have to keep doing this. So if you couldn't, put that many steps in the day what got would it do? got it got it okay that's that's a lot better so uh the main focus then is i would want to put a lot of energy towards building muscle so that right. i i have a a faster metabolism so it doesn't require as much activity to help me lean out so that would be step one right like i would want to get to a place where we have enough muscle mass on our body that you're eating a good amount of calories and good i mean for a, a man your size, I want you north of 3,000 plus calories a day without putting body fat on. So that would be the foot. Yeah. So that to get there, that doesn't mean like today you go yeah. from where you're at to there, but the, that would be the main focus first. And then okay. I would re reduce calories to lean you out because I know that I can't make you do 12, 15, 20,000 steps a day. So then I would cut. But the mistake that a, that a lot of people make that may be in a similar situation as you is go, hey, I want to lean out. I hear Adam say you got to walk all the time. I can't do that. So I should just cut calories. But you're coming from a place of only eating, say, 2,200 calories a day. And, you're yeah, yeah. and so I don't know if I was close at all where you're at. But that the problem with that is if you've got more than five pounds of fat that you want to lose, you're going to end up at such a low calorie, it's going to be really difficult to maintain. So let's say 
that if I, let's say I guessed a, a similar number to where you're at and you're like, Hey, I want to lose like 15 pounds of body fat. So we reduce two to 300 calories. You lean out a couple pounds. Then we reduce 200 calories. Again, you lean out a couple more pounds before you know it, you're eating 1500 calories a day and you're still about five pounds from your goal. So it's like, you're at a place where you're so low a calorie. It's, it's not sustainable long-term. And so that's a sign that we should have done it the other way, which is we should have put more energy and focus on building muscle and, and get a faster metabolism so that when we reduce those calories, you land at a place that you're like, oh, this is sustainable. And that's why I said 3000 plus. So now envision that we go on a journey for the next six months of building muscle. And I build say 10 pounds of muscle on you over the course of say six months. Mm -hmm. And then, okay. and we get your metabolism up to 3,000, 3,200 calories. And then I slowly bring you down and then you get to your place where you're lean and you're happy where you're, you're at body fat wise and you're eating 2,200 calories. So that's how I would approach, you know, getting you there if we were limited by movement and steps to help us, uh, create the caloric deficit. Yeah. And honestly, Mike, uh, trying to walk or run or burn fat off through activity isn't really a great long-term approach anyway. So. Right, which is what I, I hear from you guys. I've been listening for the like, last two years. I've been running your MAPS program, which I, which I absolutely love, uh, which I have a question for you, Sal. You mentioned something a few episodes ago. Um, you guys were talking, you and I were talking about deadlifting, grips, yeah. right? And uh, how you were saying imbalances, you should, if you use a mixed grip, which I know, Adam, you should, you, you're saying you should use a overhead grip, but if you use a mixed grip, should you do even sets by switching them? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. If you, if you, if you go right hand supinated, uh, left hand pronated and then switch and then switch. Yeah. Do I would do even sets or start the next workout with the other, uh, position. So if it's only three sets, then in, let's say, you know, two sets were right hand supinated. Then the next set, the next time you work out, do two sets where the left hand, uh, is supinated. I Oh, so you actually want to do, okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, I have one more question for Adam, which would make you my second favorite. <laughs> In fact, it's so unfair to Sal and Justin, which yeah. I love both, but it's, it's making my second dude. favorite. <laughs> okay. uh, In basketball. I'm checking out your magazine goat? collection. Okay. You don't need to who's, who's the, the goat? goat? Who's the goat? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean... <laughs> Here's here's the thing, and this will be this will be an unpopular answer because I'm I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan, and I could and by the way I could argue this cave. We had an hour to talk about this. I could argue <laughs> Jordan, and I could argue LeBron, um, for both different reasons. Like statistically, what LeBron is doing, I mean, what he's surpassing numbers wise, you can't deny what that man's done as far as how many championships he's been to, all the trophies that the guy's got, the scoring title that he has. Statistically, you have to give, you have to tip your hat to him and say he potentially is that. But what Jordan did in his era at that time, the way he was feared uh, at that time too. I mean, you have a lot of people that got to play with both, and they would say that Jordan is still the goat because of the the player mentality that he had on the court. So I could argue either case. I know that's probably not the answer you're looking for, but plus LeBron's um, going, yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I've 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 liked LeBron less and less for less about his basketball and more of what he what he the way he talks outside of basketball. So it's hard because I because of that I like him less. I loved that Jordan played the game and left it at that and didn't try and, and uh, involve himself in so many other things. So personally, I have more respect for him for that. But uh, you could argue either way, man. You really can. I'm assuming that you didn't have anybody else on that that list. It's Jordan or LeBron, right? Correct. Yeah. I was I was asking your opinion. So you're gonna play. Uh, you're not gonna choose one or the other. I'm not because it's. I don't think it's fair because you if you can't compare somebody that generationally there did they played against different different defenses and players mm -hmm. there was different rules in the game you could get away with so much more defensively back in the days with Jordan so the physicality of the game is different so the game has evolved and changed um so it's hard to compare just like it's hard to compare boxers it's hard to compare you know Muhammad Ali to a Mike Tyson era because stylistically the athletes they were fighting against where we're at. So it's one of those things that's fun to get drunk or high and talk to your friends about for two hours and argue. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's fair to, to compare, you know what I'm saying? 
well, let me let me give one for Sal and Justin to go down a rabbit hole. Uh, you guys <laughs> talked about this the other day uh, about errors, bronze error, gold error. You asked this question about what would the next error be. Yeah, Do you remember this? Yep. Oh yeah. It would be, it would be yeah. iron. The uh, iron era. And, and the only reason why is because uh, in 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 the Bible, there's a story about Nebuchadnezzar who has a dream about a statue of head of gold, silver, bronze, and iron. That was the, the uh, next. Uh, no, that's, oh, that's yeah, cool. the iron. So there you go. There's your answer. Yeah. Hey, that's cool. I like that. That's cool. I was thinking platinum. So yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, Good deal. Hey, guys. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You got him right, right on. All right, dude. Mike. Thanks take it easy, in. man. Bye. What about uh, Dr. J? What, didn't, he, didn't he score the most? Nah, it doesn't, he's not even no. close. Because nobody could defend his The, the only thing I would say is, shot is air hook, right? I've heard arguments on Jordan's behalf about um, you know the well-roundedness in terms of like him winning awards for defense and him winning awards for a lot of things uh, consistently that LeBron didn't. But, I mean, to your point, it, the game was a completely different animal back then, and so he – I just I liked his mentality and his ten tenaciousness. Uh, he wasn't as physically dominant as LeBron, so for me, I lean more into that just based off of like him uh, being able to grind his way towards like all those championships. I also lean towards Jordan because what he did was so unique and unprecedented when he did it. Like, and this is kind of an unfair way to do this, but I mean, I think it's true. I think you guys imagine being in an era where when you look at the landscape. Uh, nobody is doing any of these things and you oh, go pay for the one. maverick versus yeah. nowadays like and what lebron like lebron's peers are all they push him yeah right like where jordan had to push himself mm -hmm. like he was so far ahead of everybody for so long imagine and i have a lot of respect for that it's really easy to settle when you're already clowning everybody for already for a really long time to keep pushing to keep driving to be better and better where I feel like LeBron has a, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of very talented players that are pushing the envelope uh, today uh, in comparison to then, like just the the level. Of, I mean, God, if you just go back 50, 60 years ago, yeah. NBA players were also contractors and plumbers, yeah. and they Jordan, played. Jordan was one of the first to actually start weight training. You know, like yeah. that, that he kind of brought that in, and you look at the physicality of <sighs> of LeBron and like just how like strong and like able he is to shoot threes and like he's he's so versatile all over the place but uh yeah like you said i think like michael jordan really brought and ushered in a lot of that uh to hand off there but then but then i so i i guess like I, I could defend it both ways if i go this way if you put those two guys one-on-one -on -one, lebron would he would, would stomp him yeah, yeah. LeBron, Physi physically uh, and i hate to say that but would lebron would. exist if jordan never existed yeah, that's right. the question right yeah, I mean, he, he, he would, grew up he grew up he grew up idolizing jordan. that's what i'm saying different player look it's like Jimi hendrix when he played when he played that feedback with the guitar nobody ever heard that before that's yeah. a, and now that, everybody does it but but when he did it everybody's like what the hell that's why i think that's why you get the 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 edge in my opinion when you paved You're the, the way. trailblazer well, yeah when you paved it first for the rest of the guys to follow the blueprint you got to get a little extra credit for that even if somebody else surpasses you in accolades of course you got i mean if you created it or if you were the first to do so many so many of these things and got jordan was the first to do so many so many yeah. great things so our next caller is ashley from iowa hi ashley how can we help you hi guys how are you guys doing good, good. Yeah, how are you Good. Hey, I, the question I want to run by you today is just more or less moving into a phase of life that I hope to be kind of the final, just what I, what I end up doing for kind of the rest of my life in the gym. Um, and I was hoping you could give me some feedback on it. Um, so I've been in, I've been in the gym for like 15 years now, so I'm super comfortable in the gym, been using barbells and dumbbells. So nothing, nothing like that is kind of out of the picture for me. Um, but I did have a baby about two years ago, so I now have a toddler and, um, so I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to do now that where my lifestyle, as well as like continuing to build muscle and get benefits of that kind of meet in the middle, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So my, my question for you is I, I tend to eat around maintenance. I do track cal I have tracked calories for a while. Right now, I mo may are mostly focused on protein, um, but I would say I'm roughly around 22 to 2,400 calories for maintenance, um, and I, I tend to stick there all year round. 
Um, but I would like to get the benefits of like a bulk for muscle building. And I was wondering if it would work to do that without actually changing up my calories. So because I live in Iowa, there's like two to three months out of the year in the, in the winter where I'm definitely less active than I am the rest of the year. And so I'm burning less calories in those months as opposed to like adding more calories in, I'm burning less. Therefore my body, my body essentially has more calories. And I was wondering if during those months, if I could run a program like strong or powerlifting and get the same benefits of building muscle that you would get in a bulk without having to like add calories into my diet. What is, what is, what is your training look like typically leading up? So before all that, right before we made this mental shift of what you want to do, how, how, uh, you, how so you, for the past 15 years? Yeah. Uh, most, well, it's 50, 50 it's, I've been doing aesthetic for a while now. I was in, I was in CrossFit for probably seven or eight years. So it's about 50, 50. Okay. Um, but for the last, since COVID, I switched over to using LCK and doing more aesthetic type stuff. Um, and then your guys' program since then. So for the past three or four years, it's been mostly like aesthetic. So I think, uh, and are, did you follow MAPS Aesthetic? Was that your choice of our programs? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so and I do have anabolic. I do have okay. strong and 15. I followed 15 when our daughter was born. Yeah. I would say, you'd be surprised, uh, if, like getting to your original question about, can I keep my calories the same, but yet still kind of do a bulk? Typically I'd say no, but if somebody was really active, say CrossFit, say MAPS Aesthetic, high volume type of training, moving to a MAPS Anabolic two times a week, you'd be surprised what you could do with something like that. It, the hardest part will be the mental shift from somebody who's got an athletic background like you that's been probably hitting the weights pretty hard for a really long time to shift from that high of a volume training to something that's less volume. And you'd be surprised what you could do with that. I think that you could do that without having to add a bunch of calories. So what do you, what do your calories sit at before these, these two months? You said 2,200? Yeah, I would say I only focus on my, I mainly focus on my protein, which is about 170 because that's one for one. And then the fats and carbs kind of fall in line. But I would say I usually hit about 22 to 23. When you get to these, these two months of less activity, do you gain weight typically? Um, not, not that I notice. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't step on a scale. So nothing exaggerated. You'd be, you'd be surprised how the body adapts to movement when it comes to calories. So I would say you probably want to bump your calories also. You would be surprised. Now the benefit might be more recovery, a little bit of rest, uh, depending on how active you were. As I said, do you think if she's training five days a week and she went to two days a week, that wouldn't do it? That might do it. But that's just, that's mostly from the recovery aspect, I would say more than the, like I'm burning calories, like the amount of calories you burn while you exercise. Okay. That's a fair point. Your body adapts really quickly one way or the other, like really, really quickly. So and there, there's a period of time where it does, you, you do get some effects. And she's so low, it's not a big Yeah, and you've been sense. working out for so long. You have a lot of muscle. You look, you're probably really strong. Um, I would say go on a small calorie surplus um, at the same time and, and see what happens. I think if you made the switch, though, from, you know, if you're training more like a five-day-a-week program down to like a two-day-a-week program, it wouldn't take a lot extra calories. You, no. would, you know, 200-calorie bump. And the that's re it. reduced yeah, volume. Yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, you would see a good response from that. Exactly. Perfect. So I could just like through as my year goes uh, on or as my years go on, just switch to more of like an anabolic within those totally. winter months and totally. then kind of back to totally. Yep. 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 After yep. that. And mm -hmm. you'll get really strong probably. Yeah. Too easy. That was really all I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> I mean, and I love the idea that you've already incorporated map 15. Cause that's the other thing, uh, you know, having a, a two year old, like the benefits of <laughs> utilizing, uh, that way of training too, which is in a sense, it's kind of like anabolic just split up over five days and broken up in 15 minutes when you really dissect like what we're doing in there. So it's like basically choosing, should I lift two or three days a week or do I want to lift every day and just less time? Very similar as far as volume. There's a little bit more in, in anabolic if you're doing three days a week. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that was awesome. really all I wanted help with. Thank all you, right, Ashley. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, guys. All you right. got it. Yeah, the, the whole reducing... Uh, she looks strong as fuck. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can always a, tell, right? Yeah. The, the reducing calories uh, or calorie burn, the benefits often come from just the improved recovery.
right? You're just allowing your body to recover more and respond more to the muscle building signal. Mm -hmm. There's a reduction in calorie burn, but that starts to, <clears throat> your body starts to adapt to it pretty quickly. No, you make a good point. <coughs> and when you're, you're already kind of in the low 2200 calories is not a lot. And so when you're talking about what you're saying, it's not a huge, yeah, it's not a huge bump. Yeah. yeah. It's not a huge fl fluctuation. Not to mention if her body does respond and build some muscle, her metabolism is going to speed up a little totally. bit too. So mm -hmm. she's going to inevitably have to at she'll least She'll just add. get She'll get us stronger is what's going to happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 No, she'll have to add some calories. Our next caller is Bridget from California. Hi, Bridget. How can we help you? Hey guys. How's it going? Good. 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 Thanks. For, thanks for having me. Super excited. This is really cool. I've been listening to the podcast for years, so right on. can't wait to ask you. <laughs> Let's hear it. All right. So my question is related to quad dominance. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background. I played softball for about eight years when I was growing up, um, which is kind of like I self-diagnosed my quad dominance from softball. Basically, I just would like to know if it's possible to permanently fix quad dominance. Um, what can I do in my workouts? and or like everyday life to fix it or um, activate my glutes more, hamstrings more? Um, is it possible? Can I do it? What can I do if it is? Um, yeah, just looking to really balance out my legs a lot more. What makes you, uh, what makes you think you have quad dominance? What are, the, mm. what are the things that you see? Um, visibly, I think I do just like the front half of my upper leg is definitely more, um, uh, protrudes forward a lot more than the back, as well as when I'm working out, like if I'm doing squats, my quads totally take over. Okay. Um, when I'm deadlifting, if I don't really prime beforehand, then my quads tend to take over. It's really just kind of like doing any kind of exercises. My quads just totally take over the movement and I can't feel like my hamstrings or glutes or any other part of my leg working. Are you, are you able to uh, break parallel and get uh, real good depth in your squat? I can. However, it's, if I go too low, then it's really just like on the way up. It's all quads. Were you a catcher when you played uh, yeah, I was just thinking softball? Thing. No, I wish I was cool like that. No, I was just, I did, I bounced around. I wasn't that great of a player, to be honest with you guys. I did play for a while, but I wasn't that great. So I was out in like outfield or okay. I did a little bit of first base and third base. Well, I'm only asking because uh, catchers in yeah. that, that quad stretch position, they're just, their quads just get so constant ice developed. There, uh, yeah. I would start all your lower body workouts with glute and hamstrings and then move to the other stuff. So it'd be like hip thrust, stiff legged deadlift. Then I go to squats. Do you hip thrust right now? Yeah. Oh man, I just hit a PR doing maps anabolic with hip thrust, and oh my god, I love it. I'm so excited. It was awesome. <laughs> Great feeling. Yeah. Every workout I would start that that involved the lower body, I would start with the posterior chain. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to do it. And then end your workout. Okay. You can even do it like this if your quads are really developed. You can even do. <clears throat> you know, uh, all the posterior chain exercises, then do your upper body exercises and then finish with your quad exercises. You could literally deprioritize it that much. Yeah. I mean, if, if I she, would, you could deprioritize where she's almost not even doing it. If yeah. she's got that yeah. much dominance there, you can put, you can add in an additional hamstring exercise or a good morning or yeah. something that's another glute movement instead of the quads. If you're yeah. happy with the development of your quads and the primary focus is to build the glutes and the hamstrings, you know, anywhere where we have programs, say, you know, uh, sissy squats or more quad dominant exercises, trade them out for uh, posterior chain. So trade them out for good mornings, deadlifts, uh, you know, whether it be conventional or Romanian deadlifts, uh, hip thrusts, movements like that. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay. Yeah. So that's exactly what I've been doing over the past I don't know, year or so. And it has slowly worked, but I still feel like when I get up to higher reps on certain exercises, like I'll be great up until like a certain amount and then mm -hmm. my quads take over. But I've also, I'm not sure if this really matters or not, or if it's really a concern. I've noticed that my quads really aren't that strong, to be honest with you. They just 
take over. I don't know if that makes any sense, sure. but mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, li literally what we what I it's said just recruitment is, patterns. Yeah. yeah, and literally what I said will do it. I would start every lower body exercise with all posterior chain stuff, yeah. and even avoid quad exercises for a lot of different workouts. Um, and then you'll slowly start to see things catch up. And, and really take your time in the beginning to have that isometric sort of um, um, firing and allow yourself to get into like a hip bridge position, really squeeze those glutes and hold that for a substantial amount of time until you actually can feel that connection uh, firmly established and then kind of move your way through and do what they're saying in terms of like really, you know, highlighting the posterior chain and then work your way through the rest of the legs or even avoid, you know, more of the quad type of exercises. But uh, I mean, that's really, you just have to like deliberately program that in. It's going to take some time, like a year versus what you've done uh, years before. Uh, your body has to learn that this is like the new go-to program. Bridget, have you uh, have you ever tried to get really good at single leg deadlifts too? <clears throat> um, no, I've done it, but yeah, they're pretty tough. But I can I can try that. that that's a good movement to add in there. So we talked yeah. about maybe you know if you were to eliminate let's say leg extensions or a, or a quad dominant exercise, put some single leg deadlifts in there and and try and get good at those. Try and get strong at single leg deadlifts. Start off with your mechanics, getting good form and technique great about that exercise is when you when you first slide the hips out it'll put everything back in those glutes and hamstrings and then the the stabilization in the hips you'll get a lot of benefits from that work on getting strong in single leg deadlifts in addition to all the other stuff that we said i think that would benefit you a lot cool what, progr okay. what program so are we, what program are you running right now maps anabolic but i swapped out the squats for hip thrust oh good yeah that's great you're on point yeah that's yeah. a great call I love that program. I did it earlier this year and then I did performance and now I'm back to anabolic because I liked it so much. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And I think it's a it's good a, fit for you. It is a good fit. And that's a good call what you're doing. So I like that. Okay. So then in my regular life or even in my trigger sessions, should I be paying attention to like how I'm using my legs or is there anything like, cause you know, working out is maybe an hour out of my day, a couple hours out of the week. Is there something that I can spend more time on maybe teaching my legs to use different muscles yes. or yeah, yeah, you can yeah. do single leg toe yes, touch yes. you can do frog pumpers you can I, do body weight hip thrusters build, all those trigger sessions build your trigger sessions around that all the exa examples single leg toe touch which is basically helping you get good at the single leg deadlift right so if you get really good yeah, at that movement walking. pattern you could do lateral tube walks. You could do frog the frog pump. pumps. You can just do hip bridges where it's just your body weight and you're squeezing and getting like an ice, uh, isometric contraction where you just hold your hips to the top and squeeze your butt. Like, yeah, those would be, that's exactly what I would do for trigger sessions since you're not calling and saying, hey, I want to build my shoulders more. And it's because we kind of teach trigger sessions as this like touch every body part. But for someone like you who has a very specific goal, you're trying to develop the backside. I would do a lot of trigger sessions around that. Awesome. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you so much, guys. Yeah. It's super helpful. You I'll got, do all of those things. You got awesome. it, Bridget. Thanks, right, Bridget. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah, really, This for anybody who's listening who notices a body part is overdeveloped in comparison to the other body parts. So she's talking about quad dominance, yeah. which either from a functional standpoint, you could have quad dominance, meaning... The, str the strength ratio from the hamstrings of the quads is off. This can cause in athletes lots of hamstring pulls or just a development standpoint. Like you look at your body and like, you know, yeah. my this you muscle's know, bigger. Than biceps are way more developed than my triceps with, you know, losing balance. Easiest way to address that is to prioritize the body part you want to get the most results out of in yeah. the workout. And even the second thing you could do is cut the volume and sets from the dominant body part. And over time, you start to see things balance out. I think yeah. the most challenging thing for that is when it is specifically the butt versus squats because the the exercises like a squat could be an excellent exercise for the glutes, right? So in your head, yeah. you go, I'm going to prioritize that because it's a great glute builder. and I'm gonna, But because you're quad dominant, it's a little bit different than saying like, hey, I want to build big biceps because I have small biceps compared to my triceps. Right. So I'm going to start every workout with my curls. You're not going to get like a, the tricep kicking in and also doing right. that. That's going to work for that. But for someone specifically trying to build the glutes, 
uh, and they're trying to prioritize it. You just need to have something that's way more posterior yeah. chain focus, which would be like a deadlift. <laughs> or hip and the only thing I would thrust. add is if like there's a limiting factor for range of motion, like you can't get into the depth to really, you know, gain that benefit of your glutes kind of kicking in at that point. And that's where we would need to mobilize the hips. We'd need to mobilize, you know, the ankles and whatnot to be able to produce uh, the stability required for you to gain that which by the way is really common with my female athletes that want to build their butt they are so quad dominant yeah. because a lot of sports uh, require a lot of quad dominance because you're sprinting and running and jumping all the time right and you're not jumping through full range of motion so less glute activation more quad dominant dominant in that and then they go to start training they, they know that squats are good for building the butt but then their quads are so they only they can only get to 90 degrees. They can't even break the plane, which is when you break that 90 degrees, so much more the glutes have to activate to get you out of the hole. Yeah. And so and even with someone with quad dominance, like the knees can go forward and it can become a quad exercise if you go really right. low. Yeah. That you know, forward so lean plays. This is factor. why some people are like, oh my God, hip thrusts are the best butt building exercise. Because they don't have they have trouble really activating the glutes with the squat. That's right. Mm -hmm.